Hi everybody, how's it going? Um, today I won't be using any engine. Uh, we'll just take a look at the game Alpha Zero Stockfish 8, which from the famous match that was played almost a year ago, but the results were published uh, late uh, in late 2018. Uh, I would like to draw your attention to one game that I found well, very instructive, not fascinating, but uh, really the game that everybody can learn from. Uh, most of the engine games that I have seen are not instructive. Many moves I do not understand, I cannot comprehend the idea, only a much deeper analysis can provide answers to why they did play that move. This game is complete opposite of that. Alpha Zero is very close to a human play, but like a superhuman. So, I can understand more than 90% of the moves, if not 100, and all of them make human sense to me, and actually it feels a little bit misleading that I could play the same way, but the point I'm trying to make here is that while uh, taking a closer look at Alpha Zero games, one can really learn a lot, not from all of the games, I will choose the ones that I found quite instructive. So let's take a look at this one. Alpha Zero is white against Stockfish, well it was 8 back uh, a year ago, and I remind that Stockfish is playing on a really strong computer, Alpha Zero doesn't need uh, that kind of power. It could like play on a smartphone or something, from what I can tell. So let's see what happened. Knight f3, e6, c4, knight f6, knight c3, bishop b4. I would like to remind you that alpha 0 does not play with the opening uh, book. So alpha 0 just move 1, it's on its own. Uh, I think Stockfish also wasn't provided any, um, any opening book. So queen c2, castle, and now a3. White undermines the bishop and black has to either retreat backwards, which was not the plan, right? So black takes, takes, and black goes d6. Black is trying uh, uh, to, put a, to put pawns on dark squares. d5 was a, a reasonable alternative. So now take a look at every single alpha zero move. So this is opening phase, right? What do you gotta do in the opening? Develop pieces and castle your king. Uh, on a lower level, I would strongly recommend castling faster, as fast as you can, which was clearly not the case here, white played queen c2, a3, etc. But a more sophisticated player can delay castle if there are more important things to take care of, which is the case. Now it's important to develop this bishop, so this is what alpha zero is doing, grabbing some space with b4, uh, playing e3, preparing the castle, bishop to g4, bishop e2, by the way it's not preparing, it's dealing with bishop g4 move. Bishop to h5, a little bit weird move by Stockfish, you're not supposed to move pieces twice in the opening, but maybe it... Uh, yeah, that's the game. So, <clears throat> Bishop goes to h5, d3, white puts a pawn close to the center to prevent e4, now Bishop goes to b2, rook to e8, and white castled. So, I already believe that white is much better here. Because, for simple reason, white has two bishops and I don't see a decent compensation for that positional sacrifice. White has two bishops. But it's not clear what white can do about this advantage. You're supposed to open up the position for your bishops, but it's really hard to do right now. So, what alpha zero is doing now is the following. Uh, White has a lot of time because black doesn't have any active counterplay, because any active counterplay like e4 or d5 or any other opens up the position which is to white's favor. So this is what alpha zero is doing. It's just regrouping the pieces a little bit, queen c2. Uh, well, the queen doesn't like to be possibly attacked by the knight in case of any pawn movement a5, h3, just a useful move that slightly improves the position, h6, the same by Stockfish, rook f to c1, so white I'm assuming is planning c5 to open up the position, so black prevents it with b6, I noticed it in several games that alpha zero really likes, I'll show um, um, maybe in the future some other games, alpha zero thinks that b6 is a bad move because it weakens this square for that's like a really, really long shot 
but you'll see it will get to that weak square. And now alpha zero plays rook f1. I like, uh, okay, in this case, this is that 5% of moves that I do not understand. So alpha zero goes back to f1, claiming that b6 is such a weakness that I'm ready to spend an extra tempo or more on that one. Queen e6, now rook go comes back to e1. Uh, it seems to me that alpha zero cannot settle on the... Um, uh, now it's settled, it will gonna play rook a to d1, you'll see now. c5, uh, Stockfish wants to get some activity. b5, played by alpha 0, grabbing some space. Rook a d8, rook a d1. So now I can understand what is happening. We put the pieces in the center, and every knight f8, black is getting ready for the opening of the center with d4, but it always will be met with e4, so alpha 0 plays king h2, slightly improves the position. So Almost with every move, tiny improvement is being made by white. Queen d7, a4, tiny improvement. Uh, you never know, maybe, maybe that, maybe if black goes d5, that diagonal can open up, or will, that pawn will need protection in case of d5 possible moves. So a4, tiny improvement. Queen c7, and now alpha 0 decides it's time to go. Knight to h4. Um, the beauty of having two bishop advantage, that's like a saying, but it is very true very often. Uh, the beauty of having two bishops is that at some point you can exchange one of them. And this is exactly what alpha zero is doing. You cannot like stick to the two bishops forever. At some point you have to make benefit. It could be you can double pawns, you can create a weakness, or you can create an attack like in this case. So knight is going to f5, right? So bishop e2, queen e2, and now d5. Very logical play by Stockfish, uh, hitting the center. Knight goes to f5, improving the knight. Uh, Stockfish goes d4, not a big fan of this move, uh, but it has huge logic behind it. It blocks this bishop entirely and grabs some space. And now e4. I noticed that in many cases, uh, modern engines, including Stockfish, with all due respect, they do not understand this pawn structure, which is sort of King's Indian pawn structure, where white will have a plan of f4, uh, f4, g4, kingside attack, basically. And black has no counterplay because the whole queen side is blocked, right? There's nothing happening on the queen side. But white is better on the king side, even though black has more space with this d4 pawn, pawn. But uh, the problem is the pawn has left the d6 square. And now if we push f4, the whole pawn chain would be undermined. So let's take a look what now... Pay attention, play close attention to every single move by Alpha Zero. The position closes up. Now Alpha Zero can see a clear plan, which was not the case a few moves ago. How you execute the plan? Knight goes to g6, and it seems that black is doing all right. No, it's not. And uh, the game was won basically within the next uh, 10 to 15 moves. So what is white's plan? White's plan is now only on the king side. So where does this bishop belong? This bishop belongs to c1. There's nothing to do here anymore, but this diagonal is very important. There's a pawn here, there's a square here. So knight e7 is being played. Uh, Stockfish wants to exchange some pieces and basically say we make a draw here. Now g4 is being played. The fact that the center is closed helps white to make moves like g4. If the center was not closed or open or with possibility to open up, moves like g4 are a big mistake. But this is not the case, the center is closed, white can move all of his pieces to the king side and focus on that guy standing on g8, and actually those rooks cannot really help black king. So take a look what alpha zero is, uh, what alpha zero is doing, knight h7, but how do you proceed? h4, another pawn takes over an important square, white grabs space, f6 was played. So what do you do next? g5 is very hard to, uh, black is ready to meet g5. What do we do? What do we do? Well, our rooks are not doing anything, right? They are standing in the center. The center will not open like almost ever. So what do we do? Where do we put those rooks? We put those rooks on h file and we put those another rook on g file. This is the best place for the rooks to prepare the g5 breaks room. So king g2, rook f8, rook h1, rook f7, black is trying to improve the rook. Rook g1, white is... Well, guess what is the next move? Now the king will move away and open up the rooks. Knight takes f5, 
gtxc5. Seems like close to a draw position, black is very solid. King f8, king f1, every single move white is improving his position tiny bit. King e7, so Stockfish realizes that, well, it's very dangerous to stay on the king side. But now white has, there's a clear weakness on g7, clear weak square on g6, uh, but one weakness is not enough, that's the rule. So with, with the move f4, white can create more weaknesses eventually. So this is what alpha zero is doing. f4 now, well, if black takes, white can go like queen f3 and that pawn will not be alive. So black doesn't do that. Black uh, improves the knight. So what do you do now? Now the rook on h1 is doing nothing. What do we do about it? We double rooks on the g-file. As simple as that. Rook goes to g4. Uh, basically black has already lost here. 20 moves later uh, a stockfish resigned, but it could have resigned much, e much earlier. Rook to g1, improving the rook from h1. King d8, so black is trying to hold on to that weakness. Now f takes e5, f takes e5, more weaknesses have been created. Pawn on e5 is now weak. We cannot really attack it at the moment, but it's weak, it's not protected by another pawn. The pawn on g7 is weak. Nothing has changed. The square on g6 is weak, right? But remember the square that alpha 0 weakened how many moves ago? It was move 15 and it's now 37. That was the c6 square. Now eventually the rook will get there. That is the weak pawn and that is the weak square. Now take a look what alpha 0 is doing. Black has zero contraplay, right? So white is just slowly improving every single piece. Now bishop d2, rook to e7, bishop e1. King d7, queen to h2, queen has nothing to do on e2, but from h2 it can put pressure on the second weakness in black's position. King c8, h5, fixing the weakness, rook d7, bishop goes to h4, maybe it would make sense to go to g3, but on h4 it is controlling a lot of important squares. Queen d6, now take a look, all of white's pieces are basically ideally placed, and alpha 0 he does his usual trick of sacrificing some material. Rook to g6. Rook to g6 was played. And uh, if knight takes, that would be rook takes. And now that's why you need the bishop here. And then this pawn would fall or that pawn would fall. Many pawns would fall and black would resign. So why black goes queen b8. And now rook penetrates to that weakness that alpha zero somehow knew 30 moves in advance that that could be a potential weakness. Finally it reached that weakness. King b7, king e2 just to get away from the rook. Queen e8, another rook comes to g6, rook g6, h takes g6, rook to f8, rook to e6. Now this pawn is collapsing, queen b8, queen takes e5, queen e5, rook e5, rook g8, rook comes back to attack the weakness. King a8, well, that's <laughs> uh, desperation, I would say. There's uh, nothing black can do uh, to stop e5. Just, just the pawns just go. The pawns just go. So for some reason, Stockfish thought that this would delay the... I don't know, it doesn't make any sense to me. But uh, Or the king can go to h5, protect this pawn, and then e5 and f6 and f7 is unstoppable. So alpha 0 won. It didn't look like a losing position to me when the center closed up. But starting from this moment with every single move, alpha 0 is improving the position and it's not rocket science at all. There are no computer moves. These are the moves that some of them, most of us can do. Improve the bishop, get some space, get some space, improve, okay, prepare improvement, like king goes away, improve the rook, improve the rook, take, capture, improve the rook, create a weakness, improve the rook, improve the rook, create a weakness, improve the bishop, improve the bishop. It looks very simple. Uh, it's a little bit misleading, uh, the fact that it looks so simple. But you can really learn from this game. Improve the queen, improve the pawn structure, with the, prepare the square for the bishop, improve the bishop, and now finally, 
a powerful sacrifice. Well, probably black should have tried this one, but then the pawn on then the rook e6 is unstoppable now. At least knight from f8 was stopping knight e6. I'm assuming that's that's an issue. But uh, so yeah, there's uh, if you play the same queen b8, it's now rook e6. I suppose one of the ways to the end. Now this one will fall, and then the rook will come back, and well, white is dominating the place. Queen b8, rook comes to weak square, another improving the king, improving the rook, improving the position, imp winning material, and after that, that's it. It's misleadingly simple, but we can all learn from this game by Alpha Zero. With every move, try to improve your position just a little bit, especially if the center is closed and your opponent has no active counterplay tiny small improvements until you maximize the improvement of your pieces and then you blow up the position by either a pawn break like f4 in this case or uh, exchange sacrifice you do some action to to let your pieces get inside black's position like like white pieces did in this particular example i hope you enjoyed it I encourage you to download other games by Alpha Zero. Uh, not all of them are as instructive as this one. I'll try to, to select the ones that I find very useful to general public. Take care. Goodbye.